The Outer Banks of North Carolina is one of our favorite summer beach destinations, but in the week leading up to our first Outer Banks trip of the 2022 season, things started looking less promising than we had hoped. A week before our trip, we began to hear about a storm with strong winds that would roll in from the Northeast, which you probably already know is why they call it a Nor'easter. Four days before our trip to our Airbnb on Hatteras Island, water and sand started washing over onto North Carolina Highway 12. This was a problem because Highway 12 is the only road in existence that could take us to our Airbnb in the town of Frisco at the southern end of Hatteras. It is the one road that leads onto and off of the island and is the main drag going the full length of the island. The next day, the one road we could travel was actually flooded and closed as it was again on May 11th. So now it was two days before we were supposed to arrive and everyone on Hatteras Island south of the flooding was stranded on the island and everyone wanting to get there was stuck delaying their arrival. At this point, we discussed trying to cancel our trip, but the date to cancel the Airbnb rental had already passed. Of course, one benefit of booking a hotel over an Airbnb is that hotels usually allow cancellation up until a day or two before your trip, Airbnbs and Verbo hosts have some leeway to choose the details of their cancellation policy. But usually, once you're within a week or two of your stay, cancellation tends to either not be possible at all or will result in only a partial refund. But if that road wasn't cleared soon, we wouldn't have any choice about whether we could physically get to the place we were supposed to stay. We weren't complaining too much about this, though, because we were watching the news and saw that some people had it worse than we did with our potentially impossible vacation. Not one, but two beach houses in Rodanthe, just 30 miles north of our Airbnb rental, were swept out to sea in this storm. Eventually, all buildings on the islands of the Outer Banks will either fall into the sea or will have to be picked up and moved west, which is a thing they really do sometimes. The islands of the Outer Banks are sandbars that are slowly moving west and are expected to meet up with mainland North Carolina in 300 or so years. Storms like this are a major reason for the movement. Anyway, by the evening of May 12th, the road reopened and our trip was on. We were excited about this trip because the plan was to spend the night on Hatteras, an island that we've been to before, and then wake up early in the morning and take the ferry to Ocracoke, an island to the south of Hatteras that we had never visited. But even though the road was open, driving conditions were not good on the northern end of Hatteras Island. And it was raining, so more water was accumulating as we drove. Large sections of the road had either sand or huge puddles of water. We had to drive slowly and try to drive around the worst of the puddles when there were no cars coming on the other side of the road, but sometimes it couldn't be helped and we had to drive right through it. We were going down the road listening to songs on Spotify when suddenly we lost the signal. Now this isn't unheard of. There are some places we drive where we lose internet signal for a bit. But as we drove on, it never came back. We got to our Airbnb, which was a nice and inexpensive trailer looking out over a pond. We usually text family members to let them know when we arrive at our destination in our travels, and we check in with our cat sitter. But we couldn't get a signal at all. And even though the trailer had Wi-Fi, it wasn't working. And we couldn't call the Airbnb host to ask what was up with the Wi-Fi because, again, our phones weren't getting any signal. Since we wanted to touch base with family and wanted to check with our host about the internet, we got back in the car and started driving back up north looking for a signal. We figured since we had a signal part of our way down the island, we probably wouldn't have to drive too far to get back to an area where we could get a signal. We stopped at a souvenir store because we wanted to buy some Outer Banks t-shirts. They were taking cash only, but we didn't really think about how that might be related to our internet and phone outage. We kept driving a bit more and not getting a signal, and finally decided we would stop at a convenience store and ask if they knew of some reason we couldn't get a Verizon signal on the island. It turns out they did. 
Apparently, there is just one fiber cable, or just one group of cables, that goes from Nags Head down to Hatteras and Ocracoke Islands that provides their cell service, internet, and landline service. That cable was inadvertently cut. Both islands were completely cut off from communication with the rest of the world until service could be restored. There was no way to reach anyone except by continuing to drive north another 40 miles in the on and off rain and the roads in bad condition to cross the bridge to get to Nags Head just north of us. But we decided just to buy some snacks and head back south to the trailer we rented. By the way, it would help our channel if you would click the thumbs up button to like this video. We would be forever grateful if you helped us out by doing so. Since the only TV service in the trailer was provided through a Roku box that was connected to the internet, this meant we also couldn't watch TV. We did have some books with us to read, as we usually read before we fall asleep, but it seemed way too early for that. So we found an Outer Banks themed board game in the trailer called OBXopoly. We played that for a while, trying to buy up all the Outer Banks properties while wondering if that was really a good investment, all things considered. We had a good time and it was kind of fun because most of the properties we landed on in the game were places we had actually visited and it brought back some fun memories. After a while, we read books in the bed until sleep overtook us for a while, until the rain started back up. The trailer we were staying in had window air conditioning units, one of which was right next to our bed. These units did their job and they kept us very cool, but once the rain started back up again, this is what the air conditioning unit next to our bed sounded like. So we woke up to that and then found it difficult to go back to sleep. More than 12 hours after the cables first got cut, the island's internet, landline, and cell phone service was restored around 6 a.m. the next morning, when we were awoken by our phones going off, as all the text messages we missed the evening before finally came in. We laid in bed discussing our plans for the day, and decided that since we hadn't slept well, and because the ground was still really wet from days of bad weather, we were going to pass on visiting Ocracoke for the first time. We hear great things about the island, but didn't want to be stomping through mud puddles. Plus, there was still more rain in the forecast for that day. So we slept in a bit. We're going to have to reschedule another Outer Banks trip in the near future to see Ocracoke and a few other things we wanted to check out on this trip. Instead, we decided to spend the weekend working on a video about things to do in the Outer Banks when it rains. That will be our next video out in a few days. The weather got better as Saturday went on and we were able to do some filming all day. And we tried some good restaurants that we had been wanting to check out on the Outer Banks too. We'll have a video coming up on that as well. We slept well Saturday night at our trailer before packing up Sunday morning to head home. On the way, we stopped at the nearby Futuro House in Frisco, the same town that our trailer was in. We had read about the Futuro House years ago, but we'd never seen it. The OBX Opoly game Friday night reminded us of its existence, so we decided to check it out. Futuro houses were a thing in the 1970s. They were designed to be portable ski chalets made of fiberglass and plastic. These prefabricated homes could be assembled on your property, but they were unpopular with neighbors because, well, they look like UFOs. There were only about a hundred or so Futuro houses built, and only around half of those remain. The internet informs us this one has been used as a home, an office, a Boy Scouts meeting place, and a hot dog stand. We aren't sure if the current owner actually lives in the Futuro house. It is a little beat up, but it was still cool to see. We also stopped along the way to survey the areas along the road where work crews used bulldozers to push the sand off the roads and rebuild protective dunes. We were also planning to stop in Rodanthe to see the house from the film Nights in Rodanthe, which starred Kevin Costner and Diane Lane and was based on a Nicholas Sparks novel. 
Unfortunately, the sand road to the house was completely covered in deep water, so that didn't work out. The six bedroom Knights and Rodanthe house is a beach vacation home that you can rent for about $1,000 a night in the summer and half that amount in the off season. And then as we drove away, we made one more stop at the beach to enjoy the sights and sounds of the ocean for a while before returning to the mainland of North Carolina. Visiting the beach is always relaxing, but even here there were signs of what had been going on just a few days before. What you were looking at here is the walkway to the beach. The metal bar is normally almost waist high on an adult as it's the handrail for use by those walking down the ramp to the beach. As you can see, the walkway is filled with sand up to the handrail due to the storm. We could still just walk on top of the sand to get to the beach, of course, but the handrail down at foot level wasn't much of a help to anyone. Our follow-up trip to the Outer Banks is coming up soon, and we look forward to checking out some of the things that we missed during this trip. If we were superstitious, we might say that the lesson here is don't travel on Friday the 13th. But since we aren't, we will just say we were reminded that there will always be certain things, such as the weather, that are out of our control as we travel. While we may have to adapt our plans to the situation, you can still have a lovely trip if you look for fun where you can find it along the way. Check out the links at the end of this video to see our top 10 things to do in the Outer Banks video or our Outer Banks playlist. I'm Alice. And I'm Jack. Please click the subscribe button and notification bell so we'll be sure to see you the next time we're traveling through the Outer Banks.